What's going on everybody, it's Charlie here for C's Workshop and today what I have for you is this gorgeous little lightsaber. It's a recent install commission that I've just finished up for John, a very long-standing client of mine. We've been working together on a few different lightsabers for a couple of years now almost, but uh, this I believe is going to be the last one of his collection, which is of course the Desert Wanderer from Chaos Sabers. And in the box, here it is. Let's just have a quick look at this. So it's just under the foam, packaged as it originally was. And there it is. So just having a little, having a little look at this thing. It's incredibly heavy. Uh, so John, you will receive it obviously like this uh, without the battery installed as we discussed. But here it is. Here is the fully installed, complete, final version. Everything all done. So, let's just move this out of the way and we'll talk some more about this. So, as I said, this is the Desert Wanderer from KR Sabers. It's the Kenobi lightsaber from the TV series version of Kenobi. Uh, there's a couple of minor differences between this and the Episode 3 variant of the hilt and the, vari uh, the Episode 4 variant of the hilt. It's, it's a sort of in-between stage, which is uh, really, really nice to see on a hilt like this. So just to give you a couple of the headlines, it's been installed with a Profi version 2.2. Uh, as well as the Goth 3 Designs uh, Metal Master chassis, uh, which has had a few of the plastic pieces kind of repainted to match the brass a little bit. Um, so, just to get a look at that, what we can do is we can undo the cap at the bottom here, and take that off, and here we go. So, here it is. This is the chassis. And I've got to say, it's one of the most beautiful lightsaber chassis designs I think I've ever, at least I've ever seen in person. So like I said, this thing's installed with Profi Board version 2. The Profi Board sits up here underneath this little cover. It's a little tricky to get off sometimes. Um, it's worth noting, by the way, John, that this little cover has some uh, insulation just above here. It can sometimes slide off. So just be wary of when you're putting this little flap back down over the profi board that these haven't moved over to the edge. Or even just don't lift it up at all. <laughs> that, that works just as well. Uh, so uh, another couple of headlines about this chassis design is that it has the OLED panel on the back here. Um, it actually doesn't have the, uh, the, th the third button that uh, Goth3 Designs usually includes with this um, chassis. Mostly because there wasn't really much point for it, because you've already got the two buttons here anyway, so we decided to leave that out. I believe John wants to put like a sort of mini crystal in there to kind of accent the little gap that's above the screen here. So uh, yeah, like I said, yeah, back to the screen. So this is running a few sort of um, idle animations, and it reacts to like clashes and blaster blocks, that kind of thing. Uh, as well as having a running animation for while the saber is actually turned on. Um, and also, just under here, you can actually open the crystal door as it's magnetized in place. We have a real quartz crystal that John has lovingly uh, shaved down to fit exactly in that little slot there. And it fits perfectly, and it's, uh, it's a very beautiful looking thing. So that just hides away in there, along with the motorized uh, little segment just above it. Um, and that will obviously spin around the crystal to kind of look like it's pulling the energy out of the kyber crystal. Um, so, as you can see, most of the chassis is brass. There's a couple of areas sort of going along here that are, uh, uh, they've had some rub and buff applied to make them look a little bit nicer, and the, the chassis in, as, as a whole has had just a little bit of general weathering to it to make it just a little bit more natural, you know, sort of fit into that Star Wars universe, you know. So, having a look a bit further around the chassis, we've got some accent LEDs sort of along the top here, uh, just kind of almost implicating that there's something going on in the sort of processor brains of the lightsaber up here, as well as a more stable uh, accent, accent LED strip coming along the bottom half of the saber here. I think it makes for a nice contrast um, to see the differences between these two. Um, so then going down a little further, we have the battery door just here, which is magnetized in place. Now, John, it's worth mentioning that this battery is actually very difficult to get out sometimes. <laughs> Um, so one thing you can either do is you can either get like a sort of uh, a thin tool in the side here to kind of pull it up because there's not really enough space to get a, get a finger in there to pull the battery out and it's in there quite tightly. So you can either sort of pull it out that way 
or if you're brave enough, <laughs> there is a little bit of a, where is it? A little bit of a gap sort of in here, which you can kind of push the back of the battery, but that's a little sketchy. I mean, it's getting it out as a whole is quite sketchy. So it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, yeah, that is just part of the design. Uh, so yeah, moving down a little bit further, we've got the power switch, um, shifting it to the left, turns it off, shifting it to the right, turns it on. And it plays my little boot sound and shows my logo on the screen here. And then at the bottom, we have the 28 millimeter KR speaker, not the one that was included in the kit because uh, I was actually having some issues with uh, distortion uh, with that speaker. And I hear a lot of other people are having some issues with that uh, speaker as well. So I've ended up changing it out for a, uh, for a much more, well, not entry level one, but a standard one that you can get from the Saber Armory. And that seems to have done the trick. And it actually sounds a lot nicer, you know, ignoring the distortion for a sec, it sounds generally a lot nicer than the uh, speaker that was included. So I'm very glad that I've done the swap there. Uh, and just finally, up at the top here, we've got the Stock Custom Works uh, NPixel V3 uh, blade connector, which obviously connects to a receiver connector inside the hilt, which you should be able to see, yeah, just down there. So that connects to that and that passes all of the cables up the thin neck of the Sabre here, and then to the, uh, there's another NPixel V3 uh, up in the top of the emitter here, which we'll get to in a bit when we start talking about blade stuff. So turning the Sabre on, what I've done is I've made it so that the bottom button is the ignition button. Uh, hopefully this isn't too loud. Um, like you've seen before, John, uh, the volume menu uh, you can get to by holding the AUX button for a couple of seconds. It'll play a little beep sound to go into the AUX menu, and then it's basically, think of it as you're holding the Sabre this way, you can do up and down. So that changes the volume up, that changes the volume down. And then to lock it in, you just hold the AUX for a couple of seconds, and then that's the volume locked in. Uh, I will actually just take this opportunity quickly to show you how to get the battery out, or at least the way that I've been doing it. It's probably not the best, but I've been using a little thin metal uh, pry tool here, obviously keeping the sharp end away from uh, from the battery, but just kind of pushing it down into here. And then with a little upwards force, you can kind of get that pop that's needed just enough to get the battery out like that. All right, so let's turn this thing on. As you can see, all of the lights kick into gear. We've got the crystal displaying a, a flickering color with of course the motor going around the outside, uh, the spinning crystal on the OLED display to match it. And of course, all of the accent LEDs up here and the NPixel V3 at the top. So you've got all your effects as standard. Uh, I'll demonstrate all of those a little bit more once we get the uh, chassis into the main saber. So just a quick final thought about the chassis itself. Uh, one of the things that you can do uh, is obviously change the fonts and all of that with the chassis outside of the Sabre. And to go back a font, what you can do is hold the AUX button and then click the power button like that. And that'll take us back to the Calibrate font. So this is actually the one at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the list. So what you can do is you can actually navigate back to this font once you've booted the Sabre and for a couple of seconds there it will display your battery life on the screen of the Calibrate mode. Uh, so John, as you know, similar to the uh, CrossGuard uh, version of the Calibrate font, it works in very much the same way. We've got the same sort of OLED animations, uh, slightly different uh, accent LEDs going on on the outside here because it's kind of meant to emulate, you know, you're working on the lightsaber. Um, but just like before, John, with the cross guard, what we can do is uh, enable like a blaster block and it will, uh, well, I'll just show you what it does. So a little bit of the blue energy kind of seeps out of the crystal and we get that motor spinning for a couple of seconds. Same with initiating a lockup. The motor will spin until you let the button go. So it works in about the same way. And the same with clashes as well. So it will spin the motor for the duration of that clash sound. Um, and there's, unfortunately, I'm unable to get any effects on the end pixel, mostly because um, I didn't end up having this as a separate blade entity. Um, so this is actually part of the main blade. Um, 
So essentially, because it's it's usually done as a separate uh, blade group, um, I decided against that for this, as it made it uh, far simpler to code. And actually, if I did uh, have it as a separate entity, then I would have to do something different uh, in the code um, for the styles, which, long story short, <laughs> would eventually make it so that all of the styles that you wanted wouldn't fit on the saber, because I would have had to code uh, an extra part for just this uh, on each of the 28 fonts that are on here. Um, and I don't think that would have fit, so I opted to just have it as part of the blade. Uh, but it means that I can fit all the fonts, and I decided that that was uh, more of a priority. So there you go, there's a quick look at the chassis itself and the Calibrate font. So let's get this in the main saber, and we'll have a look at a few of the styles. So this obviously just slips in there, make sure the buttons line up, and this just sits flush at the bottom like that. Um, along with the little 3D printed black ring at the bottom of here just to hold the uh, chassis in place because it was it was falling down inside the uh, hilt a little bit so I just printed this little extra ring that sits in the bottom here and you can screw that on the top and that will hold the chassis perfectly against the uh, the NPixel receiver module up at the top of the hilt here so that it can obviously pass through to the blade. So, let's get a blade in and we can start having a look at the styles. So, of course, the way that this is done is by unscrewing the top uh, of the emitter here. It has a tendency to fall off <laughs> when, the, uh, when the unscrewing is done, so just keep a good hold of it while you're unscrewing there. And then the blade plug will come out there, and then we swap the emitter for the blade type emitter. It's got a little bit of extra metal on here just so that it has a better uh, support on the blade that you're putting in here. So we'll just get that screwed on. And one thing I have done by the way John is I've put some uh, Loctite on all of the threads. Uh, the one here, there's a thread here and a thread here. So I've just put a little bit of Loctite on there just to make sure that because you're obviously unscrewing this there's then, uh, there's then three more threads in the way um, between what you're holding here and up here. So <laughs> if I didn't do that, it would eventually just start unscrewing in the middle of the thin neck, which is obviously not what you want, because there's wires in there and they're all twisted up and it'll probably rip them at some point. So if that does start to come loose, like obviously let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. So let's just get a blade in. I'm going to have to use a short blade purely because of my uh, table space. But John, I have coded it to work with your 132, I believe, pixel uh, blade that you have, uh, the KRV2 stick. So the emitter here actually has uh, three uh, retention screws. It kind of holds it a little bit more stable onto here. So we'll, uh, I'll just move some stuff out of the way and then we can get a better look at these styles. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of space here, but I thought I'd just lay the saber out so you can at least see the blade style and get a good idea of what the color is. So, the first font that we have is the standard Kenobi font from the TV series, of course. Now, you will hear the motor quite a little bit while I'm doing this, but uh, that's only... Sorry, I just committed a Star Wars sin by touching the blade. Um, but you won't hear it so much once the saber's actually lifted off the table. It's purely just being amplified by my table a little bit. You can still hear it slightly, uh, but unfortunately, with the nature of the way that the motor is held in the chassis, and there's not a lot that can be done about that. But I've done a little bit, uh, I've done what I can to reduce the noise. Um, but yeah, just to let you know, it will be amplified purely because I'm just leaning it on the table here. So, back to where I was. The first font that we've got is the standard Ben font from the TV series, and the blade looks like this. Uh, and of course, John, the uh, the way to actually change the fonts is the same as before. So clicking the AUX button will change the font. The ignition button will, of course, ignite the saber. This will also do blaster blocks. And by holding the uh, power and clicking, clicking the AUX button, then you can initiate a lightning block like this. So moving on, we've got the third sister font. So I fitted this with a uh, sort of Jedi Fallen Order second sister style uh, lightsaber. 
style. Uh, so it's kind of got quite an aggressive pulsing. It's not actually quite as aggressive as it is on camera uh, compared to what it is in person. It's actually a little bit more subtle in person, but it's, it, it is there. Um, so yeah, that's the, the third sister style, slightly inspired by the second sister style, uh, but also very accurate to the TV show. So next up, we've got the fire font. So annoyingly, because I'm using the short blade, you can't see right up to the end where the tip is actually a lot more red, but this is showing uh, quite an aggressive fire effect like the uh, the one seen from the TV series. Next up, we got the Darth Vader font. Come to destroy me, Obi-Wan. Now this has two special modes. If you hold the saber sort of at an upright angle, then the ignition will kind of happen quite quickly like you saw just then. If you slightly point it down, so if you kind of get to the 90 degree and then go down past that point, then you will get uh, a much slower ignition, sort of reminiscent of the Rogue One uh, hallway scene. Next up, we got the Obi-Wan font. And it's a similar blue to before. Actually, I believe it's the same blue as the first font. Kenobi. Then we've got the brand new Kyberphonic uh, OWK1 font. <laughs> Closely followed by the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi 2 font. Master Kenobi, you I believe all of these have the same uh, style as the first main font. And then, of course, we've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 3 font. Obi-Wan. Like I said, all of the styles here are pretty similar. So, next up, we should have the Qui-Gon font. I was always here, Obi-Wan. You just were not ready to see. So, this is playing a nice little audio flicker style on the blade. Um, just by the way, while I cycle through these, uh, all of these have the standard blast, clash, lightning block, uh, melt, tip drag, uh, all of those effects, they all have them applied. Then we've got the Naboo font. I have a bad feeling about this. And there's the blade style for that. Then we move on to the Dooku. As you see, my Jedi powers are far beyond yours. <laughs> Annoyingly with the reds, it always shows up worse on camera. It's just something to do with the, with the way the light's picked up. But uh, you can't see this strip so much in person. I mean, that's purely because it's my blade. This actually won't matter. Um, but still, yeah, it's the, the LED strip itself is not that noticeable. Um, but yeah, just a standard audio, fi uh, uh, bleh, sorry. <laughs> audio flicker blade style for the Dooku there. Uh, so we now move on to the Yoda. Lost the planet, Master Obi-Wan has. So this one ignites a lot quicker than the other ones, purely because the uh, Yoda saber is obviously quite a lot smaller than the rest of them. Uh, so it kind of tries to emulate that small saber feeling that uh, Yoda has. So then we move on to the Kamino style. Always a pleasure to meet a Jedi. Now this one was interesting because John asked me to apply a standard um, sort of blue audio flicker effect, but with a kind of rain uh, impact on the top of the blade, which you'll see here. So you'll see every now and again you get a little white flash. Uh, it's a lot more prominent in person actually, um, but it's basically just as if you're on Camino, the raindrops are hitting the lightsaber and because of that they're reacting. It's quite a nice touch. So we move on to the FET font. Seismic charges. So that's a lovely, lovely orange style. And we've got the Ahsoka style. There are ways those who have passed on may still guide or influence the living. Which is a very, very bright white. Now what you might find with this one, um, if you do happen to enable it while the chassis is out, you might find that that one gets quite hot uh, around about the uh, the end pixel, mostly because um, that is obviously using so much power. It's using all three colors all at the same time. Whereas a lot of the other sabers, uh, not sabers, uh, the other styles only use either one or two of the main RGB colors. Um, so that one, it might get hot. So try not to use that one for too long, uh, just as a sort of precaution. I mean, it should be fine either way. So moving on, we've now got the Grievous style. Myself. 
So again, we've got a very standard kind of audio flicker going on there. May the force be with us all. So now we move on to the Mace Windu style, and I've coded in a very nice looking purple for this. It might not show up perfectly on camera because my camera seems to hate reds and purples for some reason, but it does look like this. Yeah, it's looking a little blue on the camera, um, but uh, yeah, it is a lot more purple in person. Like I said, it has trouble picking up the reds sometimes. Uh, so there you go. Then we move on to the Anakin font, which is a much deeper blue than the Kenobi uh, style. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. So we've got a much deeper blue than before. Now we move on to the Mustafar font. Now this is the same uh, Kenobi style blue as the first font and any of, any of the other Kenobi fonts on here. So it's a little bit lighter, it's kind of hard to see the difference um, unless you literally have them side by side. Actually, and let's do that. So <laughs> here is the uh, the normal Kenobi blue and then there is the deep blue. So there's the deep blue. It's a little bit different um, and it's, again, it's a little darker in person. My camera's having a hard time picking it up. Yeah, we had that one. Uh, so, this is the temple memory with the yellow style. Uh, and then we move on to the droids font. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Which, as you asked for, John, has the default ProfiOS uh, rainbow style on here. Which looks very cool, and it's nice to have something uh, a little different on here. So it's just pulsing, just going into the saber like that. And then we move on to a, another couple with the Kenobi blue. Obi -Wan Kenobi. We've got the standard uh, Obi Wan Kenobi Episode 4 font. It's a very similar style to before. Then we move on to the Tatooine font. Help me, Obi Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. And this has the deeper Graflex blue. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh no, sorry. This isn't. A, this isn't the deep one. This is a different one. This is an even lighter blue than before. This is much more reminiscent of how the lightsaber looked in Episode Four originally, uh, before they changed it. Um, so then we've got the Cantina font, Hello there. which matches the uh, original uh, Kenobi blue style. So same uh, same brightness of blue there. Then the training font. Remember, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him. So like I said, this one is uh, the Graflex blue. It's much more meant to emulate the lighter style blue from uh, from Episode Four originally. So there you go. And then moving on to the Falcon font, we've got another type of blue. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. So this actually is the deepest of the blues, I believe. Uh, so this is just just blue, uh, no no extra sort of green added to to brighten it up a little bit. Uh, so then we move on to the Death Star font. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And this is back to the very standard Kenobi blue style. And finally, we've got the Calibrate font, which with a blade in won't actually do anything. If uh, if I did end up coding the, uh, was it, the little connector at the bottom, uh, the style would actually show up about here on the blade, which I thought it was worth avoiding. Um, so like I said, having it as a, as a, a connector in parallel with the blade in the long term meant that I was able to fit more code onto the profi board so I could actually fit more fonts on there. And then click it one more. Click the AUX button one more time. It's just bad these days. And we move back to the start. So there you go. So this is obviously fitted with uh, the ignition, the retraction. Uh, there are absolutely hundreds and hundreds of uh, force button quotes loaded up onto a lot of the styles as well. Some of them only have sort of three or four, um, but those recent three um, sort of Kenobi, what, what were they, the Kyberphonic ones that we just added, some of those have either like, I think one of them has like 90 quotes, some of them have like almost 200. So more than enough quotes to go off of there. So we've basically got the entire script on those fonts. 
Um, but just to access any of those quotes, of course, just to turn it on, obviously just click the uh, power button one time and then just hold it for a couple of seconds. And then it will play one of the quotes at random from the list uh, that the font has provided. So there you go. Yeah, like I said, so all of these fonts come with the ignition, the retraction, the blaster blocks, the force, quotes, uh, clash, lockup, the stab feature, melt, and the tip drag. And of course, all of the bells and whistles that you get with the main chassis. So we'll just get this blade off and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this thing up. So here it is, the Desert Wanderer installed for John. It's honestly been one of the most fun sabers that I've had to work on. I absolutely love working on these metal master chassis. So as far as I'm concerned, John, if there's anything else that you have that you want me to add to this, I figured I'd at least do this video to sort of get across the bulk of the information. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's anything else that you want me to add, obviously just give me a shout and uh, I'll be able to make any sort of small adjustments to it. Or if there's anything I missed in this video, then please let me know and uh, I will send you a little video just to kind of explain whatever it is that I missed. But yeah, like I said, absolutely loved working on the Sabre. Um, I can't wait to ship it back to you, John, and uh, please let me know how you get on with it because I'm uh, incredibly jealous, as I, <laughs> as I always say. But yeah, uh, so to anyone else that's joined, um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to have a look through... Uh, somebody else's lightsaber, <laughs> but still, I really enjoyed working on this, and yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.